Hi, I'm Jeff Cogswell. Today here at Go Parallel, we're going to look at a, a type of mathematical problem called n queens. The reason we're going to look at this problem is it comes up in a lot of the Parallel Studio examples. And the reason it comes up is it's an excellent algorithm for converting serial to parallel. Now, n queens is actually a problem, and it's a general problem based on a specific problem called eight queens, and there are different algorithms for solving it. Now, what I want to do is today I'm going to talk about this problem and how it can be modeled, and then I'm going to talk about some possible ways to solve it, and then I'm going to present to you the actual code that Intel ships as part of the examples. But next time, what I'm going to do is, instead of just going through that the same way they do in many of the Intel videos and whatnot, I'm going to take a slightly different approach in tackling it. So today, let's look at this problem and how it works. The end queens problem is based on a chessboard. The basic problem is eight queens. And now on a chess board, in a chess game, the, the queen can move in any direction. It can move to the right, it can move to the left, it can move up, it can move down, it can move diagonally. It can move any direction as far as it wants. So what that means is if your opponent has, for example, a rook in this spot, the queen can go diagonally and kill that rook. If, a, if your opponent has a pawn in this spot, the queen can go across and kill that pawn. Now, the idea behind the end queens is to take an 8x8 eight eight board and fill it with as many queens as possible. However, you don't want to position any of the queens such that they can kill each other. So let's look at a simpler 4x4 four four example here. Now, what I'm going to do is, as you'll see them, why well, I need this in a minute, I'm going to number these 0, 1, 2, and 3, and 0, 1, 2, and 3. Now let's say I've got a queen in this position. Now, can I put a queen in this position? No, I cannot, because they are in line with each other and can kill each other, since this queen can go that way, and this queen can go to the left. So that's not a valid spot. And what that means is I also can't put one there or there. Similarly, similarly I cannot put one in this one, because this queen can go diagonal to this one and vice versa. I can't put one below it, so let's put one over here. And that works right now. Now for the next row. Can I put one there? No, because those queens can kill each other. Can I put one there? No, because that queen and that queen can kill each other. Okay, so I can't put one there because one, there are ones above the other, and I can't put one there because they're diagonal. There's no way to put one in that one. Can I put one in that one? Yes, but then I'm only using three queens. Now, one of the rules is you want to use as many queens as there are rows or columns. So in this case, four. So we want to use as many, we, we want to use four queens. So this is not a valid solution. Now, before we look at solutions, let's look at how we're going to store this thing in a data structure. At first sight, it might seem like we can just we, we can use a, a four by four matrix, a grid, a, a two dimensional array. However, we cannot have any queens in a row. That means each row can only have one queen in it. This row can only have one queen. This row can only have one queen. Similarly with this one and this one. So each row having only one queen can therefore store a number representing a column where that queen lives. And what that means is we can represent this thing, the solution, not the whole board, but we can represent a solution as a one-dimensional array of size, in this case, four. So the first element in the array, which is index zero, if we have a queen here, we'd get a zero in it. For the second element in the array, which is index one, if we put a queen here, it would get a two in it. And if we put a queen here for this for element two, it would hold a one. And if we put a queen here for element three, it will hold a three. Now this is not a solution, so let's find a solution. As it happens, 
one solution is to not put it in the corner, but to go to the next one. And this one, and this one, and this one. Now let's look at some code. Now this code here, at the beginning, it just does a usage, and then it defaults to a board size, which is 14. You can choose between 4, four and 15. And then it gets some timing, because it wants to time how long it takes, uh, both the serial version and then after you add parallel, parallelization to it. And then it calls this solve function. The solve function creates an array based on the, the number of the size of the board, which is also the number of queens to use. And that's like I just discussed, it doesn't have to be a two dimensional array. Then it calls this function called set queen. What I encourage you to do is strip out all of the comments that are in it that, that have the, the advisor comments. And then just kind of look through this and get a feel for what it's doing. It's, it calls this with the row and column. And first it checks if it can safely place a queen on that spot by checking above it what's been placed already, if there's something vertical to it or diagonal to it. It's not going to test for horizontal because by nature of the data structure, there can't be anything horizontal to it. Each row can only hold one queen. And then if, if it's okay to place it, it places it. And then it down here starts, starts a recursive algorithm checking the rows below it. And what happens is farther down, if it finds it cannot proceed, it backtracks out and backtracks and tries again. So take some time to look at this code. And one thing, convince yourself that this right here actually does test for a diagonal attack. It checks for absolute value, the, the rows current column minus call, and tests if that is equal to row minus i. And that does work test it out. And what I recommend doing is set a breakpoint right here, set it to debug, start in on it, and start tracing through it. Do it as, as level four, and then make a spreadsheet like I did here, clear it all out, and then start going back through it. One by one, you'll see Row is zero, call is zero. You'll see that it puts one there. So come over here and put a Q. And after a while, the algorithm will start to make sense to you. What we're going to do next time is we're going to test some places where we can do parallelism. We're going to try it in a couple places where they don't try it in the examples and see what happens. And you'll find some errors that happen. So that'll be next time.